All right, we get praise, esteem, and honor to the living out of him in the name of uh, Yahusha HaMashiach today. He picked us up in John chapter 5, verse 39. Uh, so the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come my Abba's name, you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and not the honor that come from Allah here only? Do not think that I accuse you. The Abba, there's one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Had to believe Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote it, believe my words. All praises be to the living Allah in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. This day, let's get this Psalms 137 and then Psalms 87. Out of the way. Put it into play. Psalms 137, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there uh, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. They that wasted us, mirth, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing your shalom, and should sing your hua song in the strange land? If I forget you, O Yerushalayim, let my right hand forget. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O you who are the sons of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy that rewards you as you have served us. Happy that take and dash your little ones against the stones. Psalms 87. Psalms 87 and 1. His foundation is in the Kadash Mountains. You who will love the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Esteemed things are spoken of, of you, O city of Elohim. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Festilia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her and the highest himself established her. Yahuwah shall count when he write up the people. This man was born there, Selah. As well, the singers are the play as the players on instruments shall be there. All my springs are in you. So we talked about a few matters in regards to this on uh on Shabbat. I think we stopped off somewhere in Lamentations chapter two. I'm not mistaken. We pick us up at Lamentations 2 and 14. Your prophets have seen vain things, vain and foolish things for you. They have not discovered your iniquity to turn away your captivity. but they have seen for you false burdens and causes of banishments. Oh, they clap. I think we did finish this chapter. All they clap, pass by, clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying, is this the city that men call the perfection and beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All your enemies have opened their mouth against you and they hiss and gnash. The teeth, they say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we have looked for. We have found, we have seen. You who have done that which he had devised. He have fulfilled his word that he commanded in the days of old. He have thrown down and have not pitied. And he have caused the enemy to rejoice over you. He has set up the horn of your adversaries. Let's take a look at this one part that he has done that which he's devised and fulfilled the word which he commanded. First and foremost, let's go to uh, Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Isaiah 46 to John chapter eight, to Revelation 19. Let's establish this matter real quick like, in regards that you who have done that which he have devised. When we're looking at done that which he has devised, this is Zaman, Zayin, meme and meme, a thought, a device, a plan, a purpose. He is devised through chaos, 
the crucifixion and shedding of blood of Mashiach, or because of sin, Mashiach had to be crucified and shed his blood. Isaiah chapter 46. I pick it up at verse three on general principle. Uh, Isaiah 46 and three, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Yasharal, which are born from the belly, which are carried from the womb. This is something we've discussed in the past. We won't deal with it briefly. Of course, we know that Mashiach has to fulfill every person in this in this book. So you know that he makes a statement here that he born you from the belly and carried you from the womb. Well, let's take a look at that real quick. Like just a word. This is to stir up your brains because maybe you've forgotten. Maybe you haven't. I feel like it's not been that long since we've dealt with this particular passage in this manner. When you're looking at born, you have a mass, a load, to carry a load, to lay a load on. So just in a, and, and this is, of course, not dealing in the literal aspect, but just looking at a couple of matters. One of those matters is he carried and bared your sins in order to birth you. Now, he says that he carried a load from the belly. You know, that is beten. And he carried you from the womb and carried his Nasa, which is to lift up. And womb, of course, is Rakam, which is womb, also compassion, bowels, so on and so forth. So if you recall, you know that Mashiach being pierced in his side, blood and water coming out, is him being symbolic of Eve of being the mother of all living and giving birth. So when you see the aspect of him carrying his stake, as it is mentioned in Genesis 49, Ezekiel chapter 12, uh, even with the story of Samson, you're seeing that he has carried you from the womb or from the beginning. I just want you to understand that. This goes back to before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, as he told Jeremiah. And again, this is him saying that he has devised his plan. I just want y'all to keep that in mind as we're referring to Lamentation chapter two, which we shall return to in a moment. Verse four, he said, even, well, and old age, or even to your old age, I am he. Even to the whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver. So why is this important? Of course, you should know from Isaiah 49, when he said, how can I forget you? He said, does a mother forget her child whom she's nursed? You understand? So if he's given birth to you, then he's not going to forget his child even as his child enters into old age. Now, this is an element that if a woman actually has the nurturing elements of a mother. See, I, 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 this is something that I've understood from a very young age, that I'm not going to say that some women don't love their children, but I can certainly tell that they did not want to be mothers. And there is a difference. There is a difference. And if you don't know the difference, that is unfortunate. You know what I'm talking about? Because we're not talking about maintaining a child. Feeding a child and clothing a child is not mothering a child. That is maintaining a child. You can feed and clothe a dog. You know what I'm talking about? That doesn't mean you raise that dog. You know what I'm talking about? Most people maintain their offspring. They do not raise them. Most women maintain their offspring. They do not nurture and love them. See, the thing that I tell y'all that, okay, once a child reaches a certain age, there's nothing much that the mother can give. The only thing that she can give is nurture and love. That's her job. That's the most important thing that she can give. The father can give those things also, but that's what the mother's role is. The mother's role is to not instruct. It is not to chastise. It is not to guide. She can drop jewels on them if she has wisdom, of course. If she has understanding in matters of life, then of course she can impart them. But her number one duty is to nurture and love. And every woman does not have that in them. It's not, it's, it just is what it is. Just because you can cock your legs open and receive a man's seed and push a child out, don't mean that you're a mother. You know what I'm talking about? So I know a lot, especially with black people, you don't want to hear that because you want to, everybody want to, see, everybody want to believe that the fathers is trash and the mothers are, are without blemish. When some fathers are trash and some mothers are trash, some fathers and mothers are good. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's really just on a case by case basis because some people had no business breeding. Some people, some men had no business giving a woman their seed. You should have kept that to yourself. She was not worthy of your seed. 
you placed her in a position in life that she did not deserve in. See, some women are whores in the brain, not even necessarily whores with their vagina, but whores in the brain. She can't love no child. You know what I'm saying? She can't get no child what they need because she ain't got it in her. Whores don't care nothing about nobody but themselves. Whores are selfish creatures. You know what I'm talking about? You're supposed to have a baby with a lady. You know what I'm saying? Because a lady going to put that child before herself. You know what I'm talking about? Matter of fact, if you have a lady, she's going to put the whole family before herself because that's what wives do. You know what I'm talking about? And I know some people, what would the husband do? The husband's already doing that. She should already be putting everybody in the household before himself. So it's quite natural that the woman would put him before herself because it's her job to serve him. It's just common sense. And you have the template with that, with Yahusha himself. Because him offering his life means he put that woman before himself in the regards and the areas of, of life that matters. See, we look at certain stuff and you thinking, well, that's irrelevant. The, the, the ability to go sacrifice your life and do the things to benefit people that, that, that are under your charge is 99.9% .9 of the time going to far outweigh the things that she is going to forsake for the benefit of the family. We're not taught those things because you're taught to be selfish. So you're taught to think about what about me? What about my life? What about what I want to do? What about my plans, goals, and visions? You selfish bastard. It's about the family. It's not about you. You No one is bigger than the family. This is something that they teach you in athletics, that no one person is bigger than the team. And that's something that you're supposed to understand with the family. It's about the family. It's not about the individuals. The man is the head of the family. He steers the ship as it goes. But is it about the family? It's not about people's personal agendas, desires, wants, and so on and so forth. And that's why many people won't be saved because they think they're bigger than the family. You can't get in an organized structure of in a, a, a grouping, a community, if you will, and think that you're bigger than the community. That is a recipe for failure. Isaiah 46 and five. To whom will you liken me and make equal? Compare me that we may be alike. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance. Hire a goldsmith. He make it a god. They fall down. Yeah, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him. They set him in his place. He stand from his place and shall not, he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him, yet he cannot answer. Nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O you transgressor. I just want you to keep that in mind when he's trying to let you know who you're going to make me equal to. These people make gods and call unto him, but they can't save him, nor can they answer when they cry. And he told you men to remember this. And show yourself a man. Mm, let's just take a look at that as, as, as it is laid out. Because I just want those words to stick out in mind. Of course, you should know what remember is. It is a car. That is to bring to remembrance. Show yourself a man. Now, that's one word. Multiple words, but it's one word. Good grief. And it is Ish, Aleph, Yah, Sean. And what does it mean to be a man, to show masculinity, to be a champion, to be a great man? I just want this word to sit off in your brain. Aleph, Yad, and Sean. Give me what you have for that while we're at it. Ish, literally, to be a man, to show masculinity to be a champion, to be a great man. This man wants you to bring to mind and show yourself to be a masculine champion, to be a great man, a man of stature, a man of value. This is what Yahuwah himself is instructing you to do. It's highly important. That's a man that you show masculinity. Masculinity is firmness of, of, of principles. Contrary to popular belief, men don't compromise. See, I know what a lot of women, what if you don't know this? Or what if 
if you got a man that you don't trust his decision making, well, you the damn fool for getting down with it. You know what I'm talking about? You the done. Nobody don't want to hear that junk about you questioning what if he do this or what if he do that? Because we already know you can't do it. Because if you could, you would have already been doing it. You wouldn't have been seeking somebody out to do it for you. At the end of the day, you wouldn't have been seeking that out if you felt like that you could do it better. See, I state that because that's how people come at you who are, why they can't follow them, why they can't trust them, because they're worried about what about this or what about that. Don't follow somebody whose thought process, mentality, and decision-making you don't trust. You know what I'm talking about? Don't do it. And that's the end of that. And if you chose to do it, shut the hell up. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. You just got to bite that on the chin and wear it. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. But I love God and Sean. I'm waiting on you. To be paired to the strength of Alahim's work or his right hand? Very well, sir. Very well. Like I told you last week, there's no need to, tr to, to have any lack of trust in Yahuwah's decision making. Yahuwah's thought process is magnifique. It's exceptional. It is flawless. You know what I'm saying? See, this is a problem with most, with, with most people is you want human beings to be infallible in every single solitary thing that they do. You know what I'm saying? Like my dog said earlier today, man, which he ain't tell no lie. When you executing, people love you. And he, he didn't mention this here because they were talking about, we were listening to them talk about Tom Brady and the bad game he had. You know what I'm talking about? But this is rather because this is something I done seen in life. Dudes done told me this as, as, as you get older and older. You know what I'm talking about? You could do a thousand things correctly and people are singing your praises but boy they are waiting for the one time that you make a bad decision or something don't go as planned or this that there in the third so they can ridicule you and most of the time 99.9% .9 of the time most of the people who do that they do that because they don't have the testicular fortitude the the ambition do you know what I'm talking about? And and and, uh, and the mental fortitude to take responsibility for whatever decision that you made and whatever came from said decision. They'd rather just Monday morning, Monday evening quarterback and point out what you did wrong because they didn't have the heart or the nuts to do it themselves. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got the heart or the nuts to do something yourself, keep your mouth closed. There's no need for you to speak on something that you wouldn't do yourself, that you don't have the courage to do. But you got so many things to point out what this person could have did or should have did. Well, nigga, you should have did it. If you know so much about it, but instead you didn't. And don't give me that crap about, well, I'm married. I can't do it because you ain't have to get married. You didn't have to do that. That's something you chose to do. You chose to do it because you didn't want to be responsible for making sad decisions and making sad moves. Let's just keep it a buck. You didn't want to make those decisions. You didn't want to make those moves. And you know what? That's okay. Does it make you a horrible person? Just makes it what it is. You know what I'm talking about? That's all. That's the only person who wants to participate with that olive yard and Sean. Very well then. On this one here, I take that olive and because you and, and and relate that to strength. You know what I'm talking about? As he has stated already, and we take that strength. And we take that to Yahusha and you're paired to the strength of, of Yahusha. And what is the strength of Yahusha, you say? Isaiah 26. I shall share with you the strength of Yahusha if you desire to know it. 26 and 1 if you would. Isaiah 26 and 1. This is what makes a man a champion. You understand? This is what... This is what makes a man a man. This is how you're able to show masculinity if you can harken back to our conversation about what an olive man was. The ox, the leader, the head. And we know he that rule among men must be just. He must be righteous. Everything must be equitable according to the, to the power, goodness, kadoshness, and zadok of the living Elohim. Isaiah 26 and 1. And that day, this song, song shall be sung. In the land of Yehuda, we have a strong city Salvation will Elohim appoint for walls and bulwarks, open you the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in. You will keep in perfect shalom, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust you and Yahuwah forever 
for in Yahuwah is everlasting strength. This is how a man is going to be able to show himself a man. This is how he's going to show himself to be a great man, a champion. Remember, in 1 Corinthians 15, you don't have to run over there and grab the passage because I don't want to misquote the thing in its entirety. But if you desire to see it for yourself, most of you should already be familiar. It is verse 57. You can come on around here, man. 15 and 54. It ain't going to hurt nobody. Doc McStuffin, what you over there doing? Are you paying attention? You aren't, are you? That's unfortunate for you. First Corinthians 15 and 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Allahim, which give us the victory through Yah, our Lord, Yahusha HaMashiach. This still, all of this, y'all willing going to relate, you're going to see, to the Lamentations chapter 2. Now, attaining victory. And I think uh, if I recall the word victory, I don't want to say it out loud and be incorrect what it is in Hebrew. Come over here to 2 Samuel real quick, like if you would. You know what? Let's do this. You know, no, let's do 2 Samuel 19 and 1. Matter of fact, back it up to 2 Samuel 18. We're going to go to 2 Samuel 18 and Psalms 98 and the Isaiah 25 that Paul referenced in 1 Corinthians 15. That's what we're going to do. That is what we're going to do. 2 Samuel chapter 18. You can pick this up at verse 5. 2 <laughs> Samuel 18 and 5. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Etai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even Absalom. All the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Yasharal, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim. When the people of Yasharal were slain before the servants of David, there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country. The wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon the mule, and the mule went under thick bowls of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak. And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab, behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. Joab said unto the man that told him, and behold, you saw? Why did you not smite him there to the ground? I would have given you 10 shekels of silver and a girdle. The man said unto Joab, though I should have received thousands, a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet not I would have put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king charged you and Abishai and Ittai, saying, beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Now, of course, you see the parallels. And of course, it's Wednesday, so I have to be swift. And, and oh, goodness gracious. And, uh, and they're bringing forth of said uh, information. So the first thing that you'll notice is Absalom caught up in a tree between heaven and earth. Of course, John should come to mind that when the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw. Now, Absalom is lifted up in between heaven and earth. He said, "You, I would have gave you such and such to smite him in the ground. See, this man here was different than Judas because he turned down the wages of blood. He wasn't like Judas to take the wages of blood. He turned it down. He said, because we will not lay my hand upon the king's son. Kind of the reverse of what you see in Corinthians when he stated that uh, if they would have known, they would have not killed the prince of esteem. You understand? See, this man knew, so he wasn't going to lay his hand on the king's son. All of these things is relating to this point that he has devised a purpose and a plan from the beginning. 
That's why he told you to bring it to mind to remember or zakar each. Bring to remembrance and, and be masculine and be a champion. Be victorious. Be a man of victory. See, a lot of men in our society, black men specifically, quote unquote, they're not men of victory because niggas is losers in the brain. You know what I'm saying? What makes you a loser in the brain is your mindset, not the things that you have achieved or have not achieved. You consistently and constantly play the victim. You want someone to feel sorry for you. You never take accountability for your choices, whether they be positive or whether they be negative. It's always somebody to blame. It's, all about it. it's always somebody's fault. You never execute. You don't finish things that you start. All of these things are feminine. These are things you learn from your mama. And nigga, don't nobody want to hear that from no 30, 35, 40, 45 year old man. Nigga, you's a failure. You know what I'm talking about? And you ought to go talk to your daddy and look him in the face and say, daddy, you failed me. Now look at me. I'm a failure just like you. You know what I'm talking about? So no, I don't want to sit back and do that. Now that doesn't mean that any of you are a failure. Because some of you may have recognized early that you was about to go down the path you ain't desired to go down and you made the necessary adjustments in your life to not be a failure and a loser. I tell you this because I have great and utter contempt for weak-minded men that complain and whine about what they do or don't have. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, why would you do that? I'm going to tell you before I just told my dog this the other day, man. Nick, if, if you call my phone talking about what the white man won't let you do, well, I'm going to go off on you, and then I'm going to hang up in your face. I don't want to hear that. How you say you, sir, you who are talking about the white man stopping you from doing this and stopping you from doing that? Don't even make common sense. So you mean to tell me a man got more power than Allahim? Nigga, that's insane. You know what I'm saying? My wife won't let me do this. My wife, this, these people and this and all that. Nobody wants to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, if it didn't go how you planned it, then hey, man, it didn't go how you see. There's a difference of making excuses and being able to actually look at and see what went wrong and you being cognizant and having the self-awareness of why something didn't succeed. See, you know what I'm saying? See, sometimes people don't look at it. You can look at it and see why something didn't succeed. If you can look at it and see why it didn't succeed, then that means that you have the ability to course correct. You know what I'm saying? If you have the ability to course correct, that means you're, you're, you're actually available in the moment and not moving around like a loser. Most people out here are losers. You're already defeated in the mind. That's why you can't, that's why you can't win. And again, winning is relative. It's relative to what you seek to, to, to get accomplished. And as we discussed the other day. Let's continue in 2 Samuel 18 and 13. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against my own life. Look at that. For there is no matter hid from the king and you yourself would have set yourself against. Look at what he said. I would have wrought falsehood against my own life. What's your problem? Because it seems like you got a problem. I know you ain't finna eat nothing, all that junk you done ate today. Hold on, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, definitely, definitely. I just want to see what they got here for falsehood. What we have there is Shakur, lie, deception, disappointment, fraudulence, and vain, deceit, wrong. So, and this one here, you know, he would have brought wrong to his life. If you recall what it's saying in Proverbs chapter 8, all those that hate me love death. See, if you lay your hand on you who was anointed, Yahusha Hamashiach, the son of the living Elohim, who shall forever be esteemed, you're going to be working wrong on your own life. This man had enough sense to know that and know that that's not going to be hid from the king because there is no space. I think that's in Job chapter nine. There's no hiding place for the wicked. Let me check Job chapter nine and make sure that that's, that's where that's at that I'm referencing.
Oh, that's not a joke, man. Nevertheless, who will really never come to mind in a moment? Ain't no way you can hide from Yahuwah. He feel heaven and earth. Matter of fact, he told you if you go into heaven, Yahuwah is there. If you go into to the ground, Yahuwah is there. Ain't no way you can go. Ain't nothing you can do to cover that up. Verse 14 to 2 Samuel 18. Because my apologies, we had a long work day. So we were a little behind. No, 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 no. I don't think that's nine. I just looked at nine and 24. That ain't what I want. Not the earth giving it in the hands of the wicked. He's literally saying, ain't, ain't, ain't no way you can't cover nothing up. But you who will it come to mind. Then, Joab, then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with you. He took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was alive in the midst of the oak. And the ten young men that bears Joab compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Yasharal, for Joab held back the people. They took Absalom and cast him in the great pit in the wood and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all Yasharal fled everyone to his tent. That sounds familiar. That sounds like just what you've seen in Matthew 28. Threw him in a great pit put the stone on it. Everybody went to their house to prepare themselves for Passover. Pit, of course, here is Pekoth, and that is pit, that is whole. Another word for grave, if you would. Now, Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up. We'll need all that. Let's go up here to first one in 2 Samuel 19, because that's what we came here for. And it was told Joab, behold, the king weep and mourn for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard, heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And that's what we came there for. Because the day that Yahusha died was a day of great victory, but yet it was great mourning at the same time. Now let's go look at Isaiah 25. You could pick it up at verse 4. Isaiah 25 and 4. For you have seen, a, you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. You shall bring down the noise of strangers as in the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall you who of hosts make unto all the people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves, a feast of things full of marrow of wines on the leaves where well refined. He will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He shall swallow up death and victory. Yahuwah Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces. The rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for Yahuwah have spoken it. Now, Swallow up death and victory. Victory in this particular passage is Nisak. Eminence, perpetuity, strength, victory, enduring, everlastingness. Of course, in this instance, it's literally victory. Noon, sod, and cot. And you can give me what you have. Noon, sod, and cot. Noon, sod, and cot. Victory is what we're discussing. Isaiah 25 and 8. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to you in a moment. Noon, sod, and cot. Separated to the way of everlasting life. Anyone else for this particular matter? Noon, Sad, Cot. The way of the sun will protect you. Very well, sir. Very well. 
Anyone else? Both of those work very well. Very well. So, of course, when you're looking at victory and he's swallowing up death in this victory, of course, you have been separated to the, to the way of everlasting life. But, of course, the Kadash way of the sun is going to protect you because it's going to protect you from the very death which he swallowed up to be able to take into victory. Now, I mentioned something now, so now I can't remember. Psalms 98, pray the Lord. So let's take a look at that one. Psalms 98 and 1. Oh, sing unto Yahuwah a new song, for he have done marvelous things. His right hand and his kadash arm have gotten him the victory. Now, we have a different word for victory here. And you have Yasha. So in this one here, to give victory to, to save from moral troubles, to be saved, to be victorious, to be liberated, to be delivered. So with that being said, you have two different things when we look at victory in this manner. Now he said his right hand have gotten him the victory. His right hand has delivered you. What has it delivered you from? It has delivered you from death to allow you to be victorious. This is the plan from the beginning, which also ties back to what we had kind of been talking about a little bit last week about Adam laying down his life for his wife, showing forth the framework of the victory that was to be had. See, the reason why I'm even referencing the Adam point it's for those of you who have understanding, a good understanding. Everybody's understanding is not at the same place. But if you have a good understanding, then you know what conversations not to participate in because you understand that these are people who are participating in something of which they do not know. What do you want? Oh, where's your mother? Well, she'll get it when she gets ready. She doesn't get it upon your demand. So. So when you, when, you, when you look at that, right, people arguing back, well, Adam should have did this and why Adam did that. Why did he do this? And that's if you want to be carnal. When you have an understanding, you understand that this was done to paint you the picture of the victory that was to be had. This was to paint you the picture of he that carried you from the womb and has borne you and even to your old age will carry you. This is why he's telling you to remember and to show yourself to be a victorious man, a great man. This is why Mashiach was able to pray. And in the midst of that praying, I still take that cup because in that moment he remembered and he showed himself a man knowing that his father carried him from the womb and even to his whore head, he will still continue to carry him. So this is a level of faith that only those who have an understanding would be able to even tap into to be able to execute on this physical plane that we call reality, earth, life, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about? See, I done told y'all this before. You know, you have to get to a certain point where this just ain't no words on the page. And these ain't just stories you read. It's understanding the concepts that's being imparted so that you can take it and actually use it and actually derive the benefit that the word was intended to give you. There's an intended benefit. But see, the benefit only comes through a course of action that is activated through faith. This is why the text say the just shall live by their faith. See, if you don't believe then there's no way that you could actually live by something and activate its usages and actually see the benefit of using it in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to determine what the benefit is before or being able to acknowledge the benefit after, but actually as you have required it that you could see the benefit and then when you actually actively have to put it in use, you can see the benefit as it is going. Most people have not achieved that level of faith at this particular point in time. Most people are not there yet. Well, I'm already over there. Let me see what you got. Yeah, see, that's a, that's a, different, that's a different conversation. He that covereth his sins won't prosper, but he that confess and forsake them will have mercy. We ain't even getting to that part of dealing with if you confessing them or not, and then abandoning them so that you can have mercy. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want y'all to get on the aspect of thinking about you sinning. 
because you could just be in an element of life where you have to sit back and look at that when you are being tried and your, your faith is being tested, as Peter has told you, the trial of your faith is more precious than gold. You know what I'm talking about? That you will be able to look at and see this is the benefit. This is what I'm going to derive from this situation and circumstance according to the word. See, a lot of individuals, when they read about Adam and Eve, they don't have, again, they don't have the understanding that you have. They don't have the understanding that you have. So they can't look at that and see, this is Adam dying for his wife. This is a man sacrificing himself for someone. That there's a benefit of his life for this individual. See, there was a benefit that we got from Mashiach offering his life, and that was swallowing up death and victory so that the son can protect you. So that you could be set apart to everlasting life. There's a reason for that. It's not just something just to be done. It's not just a story to just to gloss over. So that's why you can remember and you can show yourself a man. Because remember, he said, I'm the one who born you from the womb and carried you from the belly. So why am I mentioning that? Because he said, remember this and show yourself a man. So when you're dealing with some type of adversity, that's why I mentioned when Mashiach was praying. But he remembered and he said, hey, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done because he remembered that it was his father who bore him from the belly and, and from the womb and was going to carry him even into old age. Therefore, he could recall to remembrance and show himself to be a great man that he was born to be, that he could show himself to be the champion that he was born to be, that he could show himself to be the victorious man that he was born to be. That's why a man can't sit around and be no loser, be no chump, be no cunt, be no coochie, be no soft simp, beta male simp, mangina type nigga. He got to show himself to be a man so his son can grow up and say, my daddy is a victorious man. You know, the worst thing in the world, if you got a son, is if your son look up to another man better than you. Nigga, you done failed. You know what I'm talking about? We be having our kids looking at the athletes, the athletes look at them, look at the, they look at the athletes with more marble than their own daddy. Boy, your son shouldn't want to be like nobody but you. He shouldn't care about no LeBron James, no athlete, no none of them niggas above his daddy. And you see, the thing when you get it is you don't have to be no rich man. You ain't got to have all these things. You just got to be a man of principles and honor. That's all you really got to be. Because them children don't care about that type of stuff that you think they care about. That's the stuff that men care about because men be fanboys out here. New Jack swinging on niggas nuts. You know what I'm talking about? Man, if you're just a man of honor and principles and you raise your son to be that way, your son ain't going to be looking up to no other man. He's going to look up to you. He's going to want to emulate you. He want to be like you. Well, hot dog. Ain't that what the son didn't even say? The father has shown the son all things he do and the son do likewise. And I will also show you all things that I do. This is the template. That's why we ain't trying to serve no other God. I rather I want to be like my daddy. Yahoo Shah is your father. He born you from the belly. He's gonna carry you to your old age. You need to remember that and show yourself a man. We go back to the conversation we had about those men who listen to their father by not drinking no wine and building no house. Because the level of respect that they had for their father, they their father was a man of honor and a man of dignity and a man of righteousness. Why wouldn't I follow after his footsteps and obey his word? You know what I'm talking about? These are simple concepts, man, that are lost, that are not imparted. And you wonder why these niggas out here acting the way that they acting. But nevertheless, Psalm 98 and 2. You who have made known his salvation, his righteousness, have he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. That's self-explanatory. He have remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Yasharal. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of Elohim. Make a joyful noise unto Yahuwah, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto Yahuwah with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a song, with trumpets and the sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before Yahuwah the king. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before Yahuwah. For he come to judge the earth and with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. And you know this is talking about Mashiach because he the one coming to judge the world. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that. But that's another conversation for later on in the week. Back to uh, Isaiah 46, because I didn't finish that. And then we'll go back to Lamentation chapter 2. 
And I know I've mentioned Revelation 19, who are willing. We're going to snag that in a moment. I am in Isaiah 46. I'm going to read verse 8 one more time. Remember this and show yourselves, men, bring it again to mind, O you transgressors. And he's telling you to remember that. Remember, transgressors is a rebel. You want to revolt. Remember the former things of old, for I am Elohim, there is none else. I am Elohim, there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times of things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that execute my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, purposed in this particular fashion is Yitzar, yet again. This is to be predetermined, preordained, to be formed, to be fashioned, to be framed. This man is already pre-appointed what is going to go down. You know, it's a lot of people on the earth. They hate the word. They don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like that. They got this to say. They got that to say. And they're going to pay the price for what they got to say. You know what I'm talking about? You're not getting away. You're not sliding out the way talking about this man any way you want to talk about him. You're going to have to you're going to have to you're going to have to pay the price for that. But just know. Bring it to mind. Everything that he said, he going to do it. And he going to do it in his time. You know, a lot of people, you want you want people to do stuff on your clock. See, the only time you can want people to do stuff on your clock is if you paid that cost. And Yahoo Shah paid that cost so he can do it on his clock. See, if you the man of the house and you pay the cost, then everybody got to move on when you say move. Shalom, brother. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to move when you say move because you pay the cost. Because if you don't want to move when I say move, you can hit the door. That's how you will feel. He done paid the cost. That man paid with his life. He paid with his own blood. That man moved when he want to move. And that's just how that goes. That man don't move when you want him to move. You know how entitled and selfish you got to be to think somebody pulled a jump up and move when you want to move and you ain't the king, you not the ruler. Bro, you know how many niggas get up and jump up and move because they woman say move? Nigga, you's a fool. You know what I'm talking about? You's a fool, man. And you wonder why that woman don't respect you. You wouldn't respect you who if he jumped up and moved when you said move. Because you know he you would have control and dominion over him. You know what I'm talking about? You would already know that. You're not going, if you know you lesser than, you're not going con you're not going to respect the greater one who and you got control and dominion over him. You're not respecting that. I don't even understand how people don't understand these dynamics in 2021. That means that means it's multiple men that have failed us throughout the course of our upbringing. They're not even allow us to understand that. That you got to be a man. You have to dominate and rule your domain. That's your domain. That's your place. That's your place of rulership. You ain't been taught to be no ruler. That's why we're not fit for this man kingdom yet. Why, why, why would he bring forth a kingdom to a group of people who ain't even fit to rule it? You ain't even fit to rule it. You just want to be in it because you want the power, but you don't want the responsibility of rulership. See, that's a that's a bad place to be. That's all people want. You want the benefits of power, but you don't want the responsibility of it. You know what I'm talking about? That's why he don't hand, land, hand, hand out, I should say, his spirit to whom he wants it. He just don't give his rock out to any and everybody because you just want the power. You don't want the responsibility to come with that. You know what I'm talking about? So responsibility to come with that. Even when I was talking about reading that verse in Psalm 98, I meant to mention it, it slipped my mind, but praise who he brought it back to mind about his right hand got him to victory. And that's for liberation, deliverance. That's why he say wherever the Ruach of Mashiach is, there's freedom, there's deliverance. And that's why he told you don't take your, your, your freedom, your liberty as an occasion to, to, to dally in the flesh. Because even though you have this power, there's responsibility to come along with it. Most people don't want responsibility. That's why I say most people had a mindset of a loser because you want the power and authority, but you don't want the responsibility that come with that. You know what I'm saying? See, you who are going to be able to stand up in the paint. That's why he say, plead with me in Micah 6. That's why he say, stand up and plead with me. Talk to me. 
Tell me where I done did you wrong. Tell me what evil I done done to you. Because he could take that responsibility for the decisions that he done made and the direction that he done took you in. As a man, you have to be willing to do that. If you made a bad decision, all right, you made a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? Or do you have the ability to clean that up? Do you have the desire to clean that up? Most of us don't because then it take work. And most of us are lazy. You know what I'm saying? You want the benefits of success without putting in the work, not having the discipline to, to execute it. How does that work? That doesn't work. That makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? You get back what you earn. Indeed, brother. Indeed. And that's all that is, man. Life is not difficult, man. Life is simple. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that's on a man's shoulder, but you got to be man enough to be able to handle that. You know what I'm saying? You got to be man enough to, to be able to handle that. To see what it is, man. Because ain't nobody turning around looking at mama and grandma, but they looking at you. What you going to do? And they're probably they're looking for answers from you. You know what I'm talking about? Most of us ain't been prepared for that. You know what I'm talking about? This is a selfish generation, though. I know how the book talk about a prideful generation. You know what I'm talking about? But this generation that we live in right now, this is a selfish generation. Don't nobody care about nobody. You know what I'm saying? But themselves and how they can benefit from the situation. And that is unfortunate for the children. I will bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off. And my salvation shall not tarry. I will place salvation in Zion for Yasharal, my esteem. Let's take a look at this Revelation 19 and we'll come back to Lamentation chapter 2. I ain't going to shortchange it. We almost at an hour. I ain't going to shortchange it. So we're going to push a little close to nine. Might go past nine. That dog going to trip to that landfill. Ain't no punk, boy. Some boys be out there for a long time. I'm glad I ain't got to make those trips as often to go out there as I used to. God knows I don't like going out there. Revelation chapter 19. I feel like I'm skipping something. I feel like I'm in the wrong place. I am in the wrong place. That's my fault. Revelation uh, 12. Well, actually 13. Revelation 13. You can pick it up and, 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 and fold, and that's just for context sake, because we only really need verse eight, but nevertheless, they worship the serpent, which gave power unto the beast. They worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast who shall be able to make war with him? There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given to him continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in Shamahim. And it was given unto him to make war with the Kassad and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindred, given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, we went through all of that just to establish this point that y'all already know that this man was slain from the foundation of the world. And this was springing from what we just read in Lamentations 2 and 17, that you who have done that which he devised and he's fulfilled the word that he commanded in the days of old, he threw him down, he did not pity, and he caused the enemy to rejoice over you and he set up the horn of your adversaries. You understand? That's what he did to Mashiach. That's what he did to Jerusalem. And again, we still talking about our basis of this is Psalms 87, that this man was born there. This is a great city of Elohim because once we get to the completion, because again, we're still dealing with 14 generations from David to Babylon. Now we're to Babylon. So we have to discuss all these things that pertain to that because now we're going from the 14 generations from Babylon to Mashiach. And, and, and in the midst of that, the common denominator and all of that is Zion, the city of Elohim, Jerusalem, the city of peace. The place of rest for all those who desire to live with the living Elohim. So you got to understand, son, it don't matter where you were born at. If you were born at Yahusha HaMashiach, then boy, you were born in Jerusalem as far as Elohim is concerned, because that's where he was born. You know what I'm saying? At When he was the son of Adam, he was born in Bethlehem and dwelt in, 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 in Nazareth, in Galilee. But when he became the son of Elohim, this day I have I begotten you, 
a man was born in Zion, the city of Elohim, the place where Yahuwah placed his name at, the place where his father wanted his name at, the only city on the earth that he desired to dwell. That's when we were talking about that. You know, it's all that talk about where the land that and this, that, that, and the third. People only want to talk about one thing. Boy, it's only one place in the world that really matter, and that's Zion. That's Jerusalem. That's the only place on the earth that matters. Yeah, well, we dwell in other places in the land. Absolutely. Ezekiel 47, lay that out. But at the end of the day, it's only one city on earth that matters. And you be like, yeah, I want to go to New York, Detroit. I don't give a damn about none of them cities, man. It's only one city on the earth that matters. It's only one city on the earth that anyone should desire to dwell. Just on general principle, we referenced it the other day. I just feel like reading it. Ezekiel 48. I'll pick it up at 30. I'll make it swift as I possibly can. Ezekiel 48 and 30. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,005, 4,500 measures. The gates of the city, after the names of the tribes of Yasharal, three gates northward, one gate Reuben, one gate Yehuda, one gate Levi on the east side, 4,500, three gates, one gate Joseph, one gate Benjamin, one gate Dan. On the south side, 4,500 measures, three gates, one gate Simeon, one gate Issachar, one gate Zebulon at the west side, 4,500, with their three gates, one gate Gad, one gate Nep Asher, one gate Neptali, and it was round about 18,000, and the name of the city, from that day, Yahuwah is there. And that's all that matters. See, that's where it goes back to the process of that verse where you say these prophets have not found out the causes of your, your, have found for you false burdens and not have turned away your exile and the causes of your banishment. Because now you're not going to be able to be where Yahuwah is. See, at the end of the day, that, that's what it's supposed to be about. If you ask any woman and she actually loves her husband, she want to be where her husband at. See, the woman should want to be around you more than you want to be around her. See, if you want to be around her more than she want to be around you, that means you're emotionally attached to this woman. That's the wrong place for you to be. And it also means you ain't got enough going on. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're supposed to be anchored in what you got. Your purpose is supposed to be greater than you want to be around a woman. You know what I'm talking about? That's just, just what that is. It's just as a man. That doesn't mean you don't want to spend no time with your wife. Don't mean you don't want to see your wife. But if you want to see your wife more than she want to see you, then that means you ain't got enough going on. That means you ain't handling what you're supposed to be handling. And that don't mean I don't. And that don't mean you got to own no business. That don't mean you got to be doing this, that, that, and the third. But you have something that is that is greater than spending being around a woman. Because you got dudes, all they want to do is be around their woman. You can tell that mean they ain't got nothing going on. Because that's supposed to be the woman. She's supposed to desire to, to get to feed from your masculine presence, your masculine energy that you have to give. You know what I'm talking about? You trying to feed off femininity as a man? So what, what you got going on with that? How you going to feed off of that? We ain't talking about when it's it been tough and you're looking for, for a little bit of comfort. Little bit of nurturing, that's a different conversation. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You got dudes be stuck up their old lady butthole, man. Now, some of that be insecurity and jealousy, and you got to watch niggas like that because that's niggas who will kill you. And they'll do that because of an emotional attachment. I done told you that before. You ain't supposed to be emotionally attached to nobody. Just for the simple fact that your life ain't but a vapor. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing forever in this life but you who are. That's the only thing that's forever. And death. You know what I'm talking about? If you're on the wrong side of death. I ain't talking about that first one. I'm talking about that second. Because if we're talking about Yahuwah, that goes without saying that that's life and that's forever. That goes without saying. If we have to tell you that, that Yahuwah is everlasting life, then that means you just don't know Yahuwah at that point. That should go without saying. That shouldn't even have to be told. The reason why I state that is Yahuwah has a desire to be with you, but you pull the desire to be with Yahuwah way more. Yahuwah don't desire to be with you so badly that he is going to chase after you and bombard you. See, the more you desire to be with you, who are the more you have a desire to bend to his will and to conform yourself in his image. That's why. Because if you want to be around this woman more than she want to be around you, that means you want to conform yourself to her image. She should want to conform herself to you. 
That's why she's seeking to be in your presence. You know what I'm saying? We don't understand that, but we know why we don't understand it. Because you know, you, you've been told to be lovey and mushy and gushy and all that old super romantic stuff, man. You can check that junk at the hotel desk. You know what I'm talking about? Because that junk ain't gonna do you nothing. You can't show yourself a man with all that there because you're gonna be too, you're gonna be in too much of a situation where you're gonna be operating in the wrong spirit. And when we're talking about in the wrong spirit, not in the spirit of a great man, not in the spirit of a champion. A champion seeks to do the things that bring forth victory. That's why our father was able to bring forth the victory and to swallow up death and, and in the midst thereof. Nevertheless, 2 Samuel chapter 2, I mean, Lamentation chapter 2, verse 18. I know it sounds harsh. I ain't telling niggas don't never see your, see your woman. But if you got to understand it, you understand what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm talking about? And of course, these women, we done had a conversation before. Of course, these women, these women want you to be out here on whatever it is that you own. They don't really want no man all in their face, hanging up under them. They'll tell you that until you start doing it. Then it become disgusted. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need to go somewhere. And of course, that's that clingy stuff. And that junk ain't cool for no man to be clingy. It just, it just ain't cool. Now, there's a difference in saying I'm going to go home to my family versus hang with y'all doing nothing. Because you got dudes that rather hang out here in the streets and do nothing than to go home. You know what I'm talking about? If them boys ain't got nothing going on, boy, take your black behind home, nigga. What's wrong with you? You got churn. Ain't nothing out here for you. You know what I'm saying? If you've been out here in the streets, you already know, boy, ain't nothing out here for you. Ain't nothing out here, man. Ain't nothing but, ain't nothing but pain and hard times out here, man. Lamentations 2 and 18, the heart cried unto the Lord. O wall, the daughter of Zion, let the tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no rest. Let not the apple of your eyes cease. Also cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young sons that faint for hunger in the top of every street. That takes us back to the fact that Yahusha cried out in the night in Matthew 26. And, he, and the night watches and he poured out his heart like water before the face of the Lord. That's exactly what he did. That's why he says that, that's why Paul wrote that you should lift up Kadash hands with no wrath and no doubt. Also take you what's in Psalm 62, that Yahuwah is a refuge for us. Pour out your heart unto him. Behold, O Yahuwah, consider to whom you have done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Listen, he said, right, consider this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and the children span long? Well, we know the priest and the prophet were slain in the sanctuary of Yahuwah because they slain Yahuwah himself. But let's take a look at this span long. When this one here, it is tip, pook, tet, pay, cot. It's tender care. It's dandling. It's nursing. So, Will those who are filled with the word be separated? Will those who are filled with the word be protected? Shall the woman eat their fruit and turn away from dandling and nursing the young ones? Will there be protection for them? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins, the young men have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger. You have killed and not pitied. You've called us into the solemn day. My terror is round about. So in the day of you who was angered, none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up my enemy have consumed. So when we look at solemn day yet again, of course, you know, this is Moet. This is appointed time. You know, you're dealing with a feast day. An appointed time where his terrors and of course, you know, his terrors was brought upon the Shia and that the anger. Nobody, he didn't escape. That swaddle taking us back to Ezekiel 16 and the enemy consumed. Death consumed, but did not win. So our point of what we even started at, the majority of the things that we looked at, and that one is to consume, determine, end, fail, finish, be complete, completed at the end, to be finished and to be completed. All of that that we looked at before is that he purposed a plan. And of course, the conclusion for, for us is for the 42 generations starting from Abraham to Mashiach in order to get the victory. This is the purpose. This is the plan. This is what he intended. This is what he desired so that you could win. But if you don't take nothing else 
besides the purpose and plan and the love that Elohim had is for us to show ourselves to be each a man, a victorious champion, a great man, and to show forth masculinity. And if you can't recall what it is to show forth faithful masculinity, aka godly masculinity, then just rehash yourself with the things that pertain to what an Aleph man is and that what we did probably about a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. And, and, and refresh your brain. Because masculinity ain't about being a douche or a-hole or any things of that nature. It is the ability to, to, to manifest strength. And of course, what we've seen from that is that that strength is rooted in trusting in Yahuwah. So your strength is not rooted in how big you are, how muscular you are, how much money you have, what weapons you own. Your strength is always going to be in congruence with your faith in Elohim. Without that, you're just a weakling. But hallelujah for Yahusha and the word. I appreciate y'all time this evening. Bless y'all the house of Elohim in the uh, name of Yahusha. Who are willing, man? We'll pick this up on Shabbat. Make it do what it do. And I love y'all. Appreciate y'all for your time this evening. And you who are willing till the next one.